I'm going to bring our COO in. She is one of the, uh, she is the Stella Award nominated this past year in radio, Sheila Bell, who also works for Radio One. Um, I just, I have a question. I, I do see some of you all's hands just coming up. Um, Sheila, I want to know, how did, how did we lose it? How, how did we allow certain people um, and certain uh, industries to come in and say, this is the sound of music that we want? What happened there? How, do, how, did, how did we lose quartets, if you all understand what I'm saying? Um, how did we lose our sound that choir music isn't played on gospel, on most gospel stations? Which, which is really unfortunate. I, I thank God that at least where I am on Praise 104.7, we are able to play some choir music. And even most recently over the past year, we actually revamped, actually the last six months, we actually revamped our music, what we're playing. And we have, we're starting to push more traditional and even a few more choir songs than what we were doing before, which I am elated about. And where we lost our way, I am not sure, because when you start thinking about at least the radio stations now, unfortunately, let's, as we've been getting real, it's about the bottom line making money. It's about mm -hmm. ratings. When you want to really get real with it, it's about is your station pulling in the numbers? So who's actually filling out the surveys when those diaries come out? Who's actually filling them out? And when they come back, are they listening to your radio station or not? And it's unfortunate because for one, for a while for Radio One, we were hearing a lot of people say, you guys play the same music all the time. You can go from one market to another market to another market and you know Radio One because of the music that they play because they do the research and how they have positioned their music and how they want it positioned. However, I thank God again for I am, we're able to tweak and massage the music when it does come over and that just give us a little bit more of leeway. But uh, how we lost our way, I think a lot of that has to do with how we are living and the music that we're putting out. We have a responsibility to the gospel community to truly minister to people, to minister to people who are hurt. And I think more of us are chasing success than we are chasing what God has given us talents and gifts to win souls. And there's going to come a point when God is going to hold all of us accountable about what are you doing with the gifts and talents that I've given you? Are you really trying to put music out there that is changing lives? Or are you chasing a dime? Are you chasing a paycheck? Or are you chasing success? And it comes at a price. And unfortunately, it comes to the price of God's going to like, I can't trust you all with what I've given you. So it comes to a point like, well, how long do we give you that opportunity to, to be on the airways? Even right now, when you think about what's being played on the radio, you've got 13, 14 songs that plays in an hour. I'm sitting there every day on a Radio 1, 100,000 watt FM station, and I'm looking at the music. And I'm looking at well-established 10 top charting artists who are still trying to get on the air. And then you got your other young folks who's coming up there. You've got Marlon Music and you got Travis uh, Green. Um, yeah, Mr. Green. And, and you've got, you got all your young cats who are coming out there who are trying to get on the airways. You've got your established artists who are trying to get on the airways. Then you got independent artists who are trying to get on the airways in the same block. And that's, that's kind of tight to get in. And when you think about the Radio One situation, we've got syndicated, you've got a local personality, you got another syndicated show, and you got another syndicated show. So you've got three day parts that's actually gonna be programmed for all of those different countries or whoever's gonna be listening to Mary Mary in the morning, whatever music is played for Mary Mary in the morning, that is the set music that goes across everywhere. When I'm on from 10 to 3, we can program the music for Richmond. DC can program the music for DC. And the different markets can switch up a little bit in their markets. But then you go back to Willie Moe Jr. You go to Darlene McCoy. Their music is programmed for everybody who listens to it across the country. And that, again, limits how many people can actually get on the air. When you start trying to figure out how do we get this airplay, if you have an opportunity to sing somewhere, to be on a stage somewhere, 
to do a movie somewhere, any opportunity that you know will allow you to not only show your gifts and talents, but also do it in a way that's respectable, then take advantage of it. Do it with some dignity, do it with some class, but represent God in what you do. We have compromised the word of God in our singing, how we live, how we treat each other, and then it transcends into the music and then it contaminates the airways. And then we wonder why we are not further ahead than we are. Look at how we're living and it comes out in our music. I'll stop there. Thank you, Sheila Bell. Um, can Jen set up something uh, that can help get the uh, artists out and support the artists? And that's what every local Jen, Johnny Sanders texts me. He said, look, all these artists need to get connected to their local Jens. Um, that's what we're here for is to help promote, you know, um, artists. We right now have a regional choice competition going on where we're trying to get more and more artists to, to send us their videos in that we're promoting their videos. So the only way we're going to be effective in making a change is all of these gens, not just the presidents. Presidents, I'm going to need you to make sure that your teams are working and that we're all doing the same thing at the same time, okay? Um, building the demand, because Mark had asked a question in the chat. Go ahead. Yeah, yes, you asked the question, how did we lose, how did we lose it? <clears throat> and I'm wondering if what was lost was actually uh, a following of the demand of the population, these radio stations, they have to stay on air. The way they stay on air, obviously, is I'm not in radio, so this is what I'm understanding about radio, so correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but the way that they stay on air is through advertising dollars. And in order to get those advertising dollars, they have to maintain their listenership. In order to maintain their listenership, they have to play the music that the public demands. So I'm wondering if radio is creating the demand or actually just following the demand. And when we see certain genres of music fall out of favor, the question is, is it's falling out of favor because the demographic for that music is changing um, and the appetite for that music is changing? Or, and if that's the case, is there anything that radio can do to change that demand or appetite? So There's can I, can I just hop in on one thing and to the point that what Sheila said and what he's asking. Sure. So the station that I was at before, we're in Charlotte and North Carolina traditionally is big in quartet music. There are a lot of the large ministries here that don't care for quartet music. They'll tell you they don't like traditional music, but traditionally that, you know, that's our foundation. And when it comes to the quartet crowd, they don't always spend as much money, but they do they will spend, and they are some of the most loyal, loyal uh, artists and their, their following. I mean, they just did a big thing in Myrtle Beach this past year. They had like 30,000 people that they're going to do every year. So, you know, and I know Bonita can speak on this probably as well as some other people when it comes to the quartet crowd. I think when we got started getting away from that, that really hurt our whole, um, well, it definitely looked like it started to divide us. Yeah, I see Tammy nodding her head. Yeah, you want to say something? No, I was just agreeing with what she was saying as far as the quartet world and how loyal they are. So I'm in agreement with what's been said. So the music is us. We we are the music. We are, And first of all, I believe that uh, gospel music is the church. The church has to be the church. Because uh, some of this gospel music uh, was... Uh, there, there's music that's charting right now. It's not even gospel. It's inspirational music. I, I, love, um, I love her artistry, but the song that she even has on the chart right now, I wouldn't even consider this gospel. She don't, she, she not, she don't even say Jesus's name. So I think that um, the church, our music is supposed to be about Jesus and a savior. So we have to start putting that kind of music back out there. You know? Mm -hmm. I've always loved choir music. And um, I, I don't know who said we don't like choir music, but Brett, I see your hand up. Go ahead. Yeah, I was, you know, I'm, I'm listening to everything that's being said. <clears throat> and I think it's quite good. But I think also one thing is to remember that 
you know, we can get really down on the industry and how things are going, but there are some good things too. I mean, it's like, like Neely had said and others, I mean, I can, I can cut a record here out of my home studio and actually put it out and it'd be good, you know, and back in the day, independent artists didn't have access to any of this. You know, it's like you had to um, do your little demos and try to get picked up by a label that actually had money that could actually produce a record that would even be worthy for radio. Now it's like, you can do this yourself. Um, like, like was said, it's like, I can cut my drums here, send it to somebody else. They could do the vocals or whatnot. And you can do a great album and then you can put it up and get you, you have national distribution, but there was a time, you know, when independence would come at me and Neely, and we would just say, I'm sorry, you know, you had to be with a major label for us to even touch you. Because if we were to get you airplay across the, you know, the nation and your record wasn't available, that would kill what we do. Well, now it's like, you've got access. You know what I would have given as a musician and an artist to have access to what independents have these days to where you can get on a call like this and find out how to get your music out and actually send it to a radio station and get them to play it. You know, so there is a, there is a, um, there is a good thing about it, even though we're trying to navigate this, you know what I mean? It's like counting the, the blessings that you've got access to. Um, I think and it was, uh, everything's been so beautiful and we need radio. Uh, and I come, you know, from a gospel hip hop, Christian hip hop background we don't have radio, we don't have formatting. We have in the US one uh, in Houston engine for about two years was doing uh, dedicated programming to our to our genre. So we don't even have radio. So how do we have, you know, gold records right now? How, how's that even happening? It's because it's almost like we've been going back to the same old places to help us. And they're still effective. But yet and still there's new there's new places to fish for people. In other words, there are a lot of people that love quartet music. And in order to find that persona, you got to dig them out. And so the artists have become their own labels now. And so we have to do the hard work of finding out who actually resonates with us. Because you can find enough people to do your own tours. You can find enough people, even with 20,000 followers on Twitter, on Facebook, on Instagram, you can find enough people to make a living. I can't tell you how many independent gospel hip hop artists I work with and that I know that are doing just well uh, with under 20,000 followers, dedicated followers on their social media. It's not only possible, but they become even their own broadcast, uh, you know, leg. So in other words, you know, we've always said, you know, the artist is for some time now, of course, the brand, but he's not only the brand, he is the label. So then the labels have to show what value they're bringing and the radio stations as well. Uh, because if we're going to get, you know, if we're going to pay a promoter, we want to make sure that they can not only get us on the radio, which is wonderful. And we love that. We need that. But as a, a as an artist, a young artist, and as they often tell me, that's cool if I get on the radio, but nobody who is on my following is going to listen to the radio. Um, and that's not a diss. It's not, I love radio. I've been on radio. I've been a big part of radio. It's been a big part of my life. Um, I'm thankful to God for it. But I'm just saying, if we're looking at, it's not just that the industry's broken, it's that it's evolving. And I do believe that there are elements of it that are radically broken. Uh, I would totally agree in, in uh, Neely's uh, obviously um, so qualified to be able to speak on that much more than myself. But at the same time, the industry is doing real well in Christian hip hop and we're not using the radio as we did. But the question is, aren't there lots of people? Look at the boomers. My mama loves quartet music and she's all up on Facebook. And none of my people, my friends are on Facebook. We, you couldn't pay me to get on Facebook. Uh, I, have, I pay people to forward my stuff off of Instagram onto Facebook, but there are millions of dollars waiting for people and souls waiting to be reached um, in no particular order there, but obviously we're about Jesus, uh, my Lord. And it's just out there, which is all the artists that I know now, Bishop, it's crazy. We become, uh, we be become retail people. We own clothing brands now 
because we can't sell a CD. I know I can't on the West Coast. I can't sell a CD at a show. None of my artists can sell a CD at a show. Um, but there are people that want to buy CDs. I could sell an LP, though. I could sell a vinyl record. People are, that, that's, that's shooting up right now. But if we find, here's the thing is that if we find our niche, if we find our persona, if we find the people that we resonate with, there are people out there. And there are lead generating companies where you can find those people. And the, the problem is we're trying to say, how can we get this cohesive unit? I think it's not just, radio is one part of the answer, very important part of the answer. I love radio, but also I just think social media and understanding the power of, uh, in order, like, and I'm referring to, or I'm really speaking to the point when you were asking one of the questions, the, the sub questions that you brought up, which was, you know, how can we get it back? And I feel it's not, it's just the, really what I feel in my spirit is like the words look again, because the tools are around us. And honestly, it's a lot of hard work and you got to dig it out. It's like, there are beautiful wells like radio FM online. I love it, but we got to dig new wells and learn the new vernacular and surround ourselves with people that are doing that and grow. And so it's not just the only answer, but that's some stuff that I've seen that some of my friends are, are doing that some of my business part partners are doing that are, that's helping them to be able to make a living off this, not just make music. So. Thank you, man. Bishop Wells. Um, Demetrius we Stewart minutes. is here. Demetrius Stewart is also joining us. Or Demetrius, I'm sorry. Demetrius Alexander is joining us. I'll gladly introduce my sister. Um, oh, wow. I call her Evangelist Prayer Warrior. She's one of the advisors <laughs> for the Music City chapter of GMWA. Um, a lot of you know for decades she worked with CC Winans and her label. Um, she now is a part of Com World Compassion. Did I get that correct? Compassion International. Compassion International. And she just um, successfully just did a tour this um, December with the Clark sisters, Ricky Dillard, and I believe there was another artist on there as well. But she's no stranger to gospel music and the industry overall, Lady Demetrius Alexander. Well, thank you. And I was, I was, uh, uh, listening, I had been listening and then pulled my AirPod away. So that's why she had to call me <laughs> because I was listening. So I'm not sure what you want me to do. But the other thing is that uh, for that tour, Compassion partnered with Al Wash. That was actually an Al Wash tour with uh, the Clark sisters, Ricky Dillard, Charles Jenkins, um, Leandria uh, Johnson, and Marvin Sapp. So yeah, that was, uh, they did like five cities during, um, uh, starting uh, the day after Christmas and they went through January the 3rd. Mm -hmm. so, um, uh, yeah. Demetrius, what, what would you say needs to happen for our industry, our gospel music? Um, we were talking to a couple of people and we said, we're, we're in trouble, you mm -hmm. know? So what, what do you think needs to happen um, to keep gospel music alive? You ran Warner Alliance, for those who don't know. Uh, just tell them a couple of the artists that you work with and that you had ran uh, the gospel division for Warner Alliance back in the day. I did. I ran uh, Warner Alliance. I had, we had, uh, we, were, we were partnered as Warner uh, Brothers. We were partnered with, uh, Quest. We were a sister company with them as well. So we had the Winans and Andre Crouch and Take Six and Donna McElroy and Margaret Bell and um, uh, uh, Beverly Crawford. I, we ended up getting Beverly Crawford. We did Donnie McClurkin's first record. We did Jonathan Slocum's first comedy record. Um, so we had a lot of um, a lot of the pioneers. We did Alanda Draper. And I think uh, I was listening to I did I was listening to what Sheila said and as Tammy said they they call me evangelist all the time but I can remember way back in, in then even thinking if we did not uh, I was watching the transition of artists becoming the transition of of ministry becoming artistry if you will, uh -huh. uh, if you understand what that means, what that, what that means. And I, as I watched it, I remember at one of our, uh, you remember we used to have those music meetings. Mm -hmm. I remember saying at one of those meetings, if we keep going in the place that we're in, 
and God doesn't continue to kiss what we're doing, it's going to start to crumble. Because I don't care what kind of marketing plan you have or how much money you have, what if God is not waving his hand over it, then nothing gonna happen. I don't care. You can't you won't be able to blame anybody. You won't be able to 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 market yourself out of it. You won't be able to strategize yourself out of it. And I really think that the goalpost and the boundary has moved back so far. It is just a little by little by little where our tolerance and our um, our acceptance has become so, um, we started chasing the world and how they did things as opposed to yes. really sticking up to yes. what we know God can say, I'm pleased with this. And because I used to say, you know, when people used to call things phenomenons, I say that's something that may that just happened that nobody thought could happen because it didn't do it like everybody else said it could do, it should do. Mm -hmm. And I think what is what is real and what is genuine that has happened in the mainstream world and on the gospel on the gospel side because people stay true to what they are. Now I'm not in radio promotions anymore, but in the people that I've talked to. And you guys, you radio people, and I think Benita may have mentioned this before, the, during the pandemic, the majority of the music that was really streamed was old music. Wow. And I think it was because of what was on the old music, the purity of the music, not perfection, but purity, not perfect artists, but people who were genuinely trying to do and committed to doing what they were going to do. And I ride sometimes, I listen to me and I'm thinking, what of any of this is going to be, who's going to be singing these songs five years from now, 10 right. years from now? Because there are things that will be successful because they're trends, but trends die. And that's not what we're supposed to be doing. We're supposed to be doing life music not to spin off necessarily Johnson and it does not mean that it's stuck to a specific genre I believe when the whinings came out they were not trying to be like somebody they were genuinely doing what they did I think the same thing for Kirk and it created another genre another style so it doesn't mean that it's got to be all choir music or all quartet music but if people learn uh, or know and are confident in what they are called to do and what their space is, I believe what comes from the heart is going to reach the heart. And then I think outside of that too, this is the last thing I will say, being in all these different worlds and faces and all of this, um, our loyalty, the loyalty of our community to our genre is nowhere near what it is in the country music world, in the CCM <laughs> world, right. and the, we don't have that loyalty. Our our church folk will be in line for a Janet Jans Jackson ticket and will tell you I'm not buying a Jonathan McReynolds ticket. <laughs> and so our loyalty to our own has has is so waned because and I think because our I think part of it is because our genre has for a very long time because the mainstream world has always had their foot in the church anyway and we've been one of the few genres that be, when there was big television opportunities or whatever the gospel artists could do what no other genre could do so we were always kind of in you know we could be on BT Soul Train Awards and we could be on the Stellar Awards but what happened in that kind of changed who we were till we started chasing Soul Train Awards and would dismiss Stellar Awards if it wasn't on television. If you don't have television, you know, forget about it. So I think that there are little things like that, that as much as I've heard, it is necessary to, for wisdom and business sense. You've got to have business savvy and you got to have the wisdom to know how to uh, market and 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 put money into your own career and all of that, but at the core of it, if God is not saying okay, I don't care what you do, it's just gonna kind of 
you're gonna just you're gonna just do what you do. And for for an artist, I was listening to one of the young ladies talking about being an artist. You are not your you are not your audience. So you can say all day long, my music is great. The audience got to say your music is great. <laughs> They're the one. You're not going to buy your records. You're not going to turn your the radio station on. Your audience is going to do that. So you, they have to be the ones feeling it, not you. Because people's like, I know my thing is this. My thing is that you can think it all day long. But if it doesn't resonate with them, you just made a record for yourself. <laughs> Ooh, that's some good stuff. Okay, you guys, we were, thank you, Demetrius. And you know what? We I know we got uh, many many other questions. Uh, Ron Briggs, you have something you want to say? I saw you scooting up. Uh, listen, I'm just back in the background shouting because uh, Lady Alexander didn't preach the whole truth, nothing but the truth. That was the gospel truth. I'd like to start this offering off it. <laughs> hey, Mark Stalwart from Boston, you had your hand up. Yes, Bishop. Can anybody hear me? I'm yeah, sure I'm we got okay. you. Yeah, everything is really on point. And, and one thing I want to say is that um, in terms of the gin, I feel that we have the knowledge, we have the ingredients for a really super powerful spiritual gumbo, meaning we, we could create our own platforms to help these out and then reach out and syndicate these platforms to other networks because as you know, there's only so much time in the day um, and they're worrying about, you know, once someone's charted, their goal is to keep on the charts and to keep on the charts, you're keeping, from, you're keeping somebody else from being on the charts. But I think if we were to come together and create our own platform um, that, that, that the industry, the, the outsiders would look at in terms of, 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 of who we're, you know, who the artists are that we're, um, you know, help, helping and blessing to get to that next level. And it's a twofold process because like everyone said tonight, like, and you said something key, we, you, you've got to be willing to sow into yourself before you expect everybody else to sow into you. And so that means looking at what it takes to make sure that your record is getting coded and, and doing all the proper things so you can get your royalties because there's so many different aspects. And because gospel music has been so divided because it, 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 even though it all points back to God, at the end of the day, um different different strokes for different folks like like pastor phil said you know he they're not really big on radio because the young kids don't listen to radio but they are on social media and they're on they have their ways of getting together you got the quartet music and and quartet music is great but you know radio says it's too long because they want only want a three or four minute song so they can get those commercials in there but it, i think we should develop a platform that will allow us to help each individual genre, and then we can market that platform. Like, why aren't we reaching out to Sirius XM? I, I think we could we could have our own network or 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 station on Sirius XM. Or hey, even ask Kirk, can we can we get some time from you so we can bring out some some artists um, and and get give them some exposure. And, and lastly, I just want to say that you know it, you know listening to everybody tonight, the word says that God doesn't worry about the ninety nine; He worries about the one but everything in the industry is about the 99. You know what I mean? So those independent artists have a hard time getting broken in or getting to be, to be get, being able to be blessed on, on the networks. So I'm just saying as a gin, I'm looking at the screen of all these powerful people and I'm like, wow, we got everything here. If we put ours, ours together, we should be able to reach out and get something somewhere where we can help get this to the next hour. So Pastor Phil's people can get played. We can get the quartet music played, the choir music played. And, and just for the record, everybody, I, I have a program on Sunday morning called the Praise Fest. My first hour is, is choir music because I was brought up in it. So I'm letting you know, I'm still giving it love up here in Boston. And, and you know, choir is choir is the choir. And, and I love all the all of the gospel music because at the end of the day, it all points to God. So I'm going to just say that and shut it down. All right. Thank you, brother. Um <laughs>